Hi, did you want to get your money back? Security deposit money, that is? Well, then stick around. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I make videos about what it's like to live and work here and advice and tips on buying, selling, and investing right here in this area. If this is something that interests you, please hit that subscribe button below and hit the bell so that you're notified of the new videos I release every Monday. Every day I get to work with some of the coolest people in the world relocating to my area. Many of them living in New Jersey and commuting up to New York City every day. If this sounds like you and you're looking for a place to live, go ahead and give me a call. I've got your back. This week's video, I'm gonna be talking to all you renters out there or soon to be renters. If you're thinking to yourself, man, I gotta give over a big chunk of my money to these people to hang on to as a security deposit. I wanna make sure I get that money back. You know, that's my money. Well, we're gonna be talking about that today. So let's start at the beginning. Let's say you found your dream apartment. You are about to move into it. You are so excited. You've got all your bags packed and you're ready to go. You might be saying to yourself, well, what can I do now? Is there anything I can do now to make sure I get my security deposit back at the end? Yes, there is. One of the things I'm gonna recommend, if, you, um, if your landlord doesn't recommend this, I strongly recommend you do this with or without them, is to do a pre-move-in inspection. You're gonna be walking through the whole space and you're gonna be doing a full visual inspection of it. Are there any cracks in the walls? Are there you know, broken windows, cracked tiles? What is the condition of the walls? Are they banged up? Are there holes? Um, do all the appliances work? Does your plumbing work? Um, check out the bathroom and the kitchen. You wanna do everything a visual once over and you want to quick test everything. You also want to keep any written notes if there is any damage and take photos. Take photos whether there is damage or not. Take the photos of every single room, especially the kitchen and the bathroom, which get a lot of the wear and tear. Take pictures of the walls, the floors, the ceilings, um, windows, appliances, even if you think it's not relevant, just take a photo of it. Um, and it's really good if you can actually take date and timestamp photos, it's actually even better. And there's a lot of free apps, depending on your phone out there, that you can download to take times, that'll, that'll put the timestamp right on the photo. That's even better if you can do that. Certainly if you find any damage uh, while you're doing this pre-inspection, you wanna put it all in writing with the landlord in the beginning so that it's documented. So that might be an email with the actual date and timestamp photos attached um, or a written letter to the landlord and management company saying, I'm moving in and I've noticed these um, conditions. You wanna make sure you know to that because when you move out, they're going to do another move out inspection and they wanna make sure that the damage they're seeing now isn't any worse than it was when you moved in and you're not gonna be blamed for any damage that you may not have caused. Now, of course, while moving in, this may seem like common sense, but be careful. Use pads, use straps, be careful of large bulky items, take things apart if you need to, don't just try to shove it through the door jam because you might actually break the door jam. And the landlord's not gonna be responsible for to fix something that you broke due to negligence. So be really careful while you're moving in to not cause some initial damage to the space. Now, while you're living in the space, please make sure you read the lease and you fully understand what changes you can actually make to the property and what you can't. A lot of renters, the first thing they wanna do is paint the walls, which is great. I've done that before in a lot of my rentals. You need to read the lease and see what you can and can't do in terms of painting. Will the landlord allow you to paint if you return it back to the original color? Will they allow you to paint as long as they approve the colors? Do they say there's absolutely no painting allowed whatsoever? Make sure you fully understand what changes you can actually make to the property. You know, a lot of my past clients, and I've even had friends that have done this, that have moved into rentals and have done things to the rentals that they felt were an upgrade to the space or to the property. That might be something, like I said, changing a paint color, switching out a shower raw, you know, curtain rod, or I've even had somebody that retiled a bathroom. Just make sure that if you do any of that, you have the approval of the landlord ahead of time. I know in past cases of um, friends of mine that they've upgraded the space 
and they were told that they could do that and that the land would actually reimburse them for the upgrade. However, if you didn't get the approval from the landlord in the beginning, there's no guarantee they're gonna compensate you for that in the end. Plus, if they don't feel like the work has been done um, correctly or it's really an upgrade to the space, and they're really not under any obligation to pay you for that work because you didn't improve the property at all. So make sure you're reading the lease and you fully understand what changes you can and can't make to the property. This might seem like another common sense one, but keep the rental property in good condition. Treat it like it is your own house. I know it's not and I know you're renting it, but you wanna treat it like it is. Make sure that you're taking care of the appliances and you're keeping up with the maintenance and that you're keeping up with the cleaning. Certainly if anything breaks um, or cracks or leaks, that you notify the landlord of those things right away. Give them a chance to fix the issue before it becomes not only a bigger issue, but could cause other issues or problems down the road that maybe cost them a lot more money and headache, or maybe that can't be repaired. So treat it like it's your own home and take care of it. Actually take care of it better than it were your own home because your money's on the line. You wanna make sure that you maintain a really good relationship with your landlord. And one way to do that is to pay your rent on time every single month. If you do this and you get in the landlord's good graces, they may be more willing to overlook some small wear and tear upon move out if you've built that really great trusting relationship with them. So pay your rent on time. Now let's say you've lived in the space, it's been wonderful to you, but now it's time to move on and you're preparing to move out. What can you do to make sure you get your security deposit back? Before we talk about moving out, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button so that you're notified of the new videos every week. If you know anybody that can benefit from the information I'm sharing here today, please share my video with them or my channel. Now let's say you've lived your time in this rental. It's been really good to you and you've been really good to it. But now it's time to move on to other things and you're gonna be moving out. What can you do throughout this part of the process to make sure that you get your security deposit back? Once you've made the decision to move out, the first thing you need to do is go to your lease and what are the terms in the lease? What is the required amount of time and notice you're required to give your landlord to let them know that you're either not renewing the lease or that you're gonna be moving out? Is it 30 days, is it 60, is it 90? And how do you need to provide that notice to them? Most times it's gonna be in writing. So you wanna check the lease and you wanna make sure that you're giving the notification to the landlord in the proper time frame that's required by your lease. You also wanna be checking the lease to see what are the requirements for things like returning the keys, cleaning the property, and returning any of the changes you've made to the property back to its original condition. Anything you've agreed upon with the landlord in the beginning, make sure that you um, are aware of that now. Now when you send the notification to your landlord that you're terminating or moving out or not renewing the lease, like I said, you wanna put it in writing. And it's also a really good idea to send that certified mail. That way there's a guarantee that the landlord got it and there's no, I never got the letter from that. You also wanna keep a copy of the letter yourself so that you have that for your records. And you're gonna to wanna to keep a file folder or a file box or whatever storage you want of all of the things for this particular rental as you move out. It's gonna have things like the lease, any communication you've had with the landlord. You should also have a copy of all your rent checks, especially your last month's rent check, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, and a copy of this termination letter or move out letter or whatever you know your situation is. You wanna keep all of that in a file box ready to go. Do not pack that into a box never to be found again. You wanna keep it at your ready in case you need it throughout the moving process. In this letter to the landlord, you also wanna include your new address and ask them to forward your security deposit there and any um, mail or anything that comes to the house after you moved out, because let's face it, there's always some trickles, if they wouldn't mind forwarding that to your new address. Now to get back to something I had just said in terms of paying your last month's rent. You know, I work with a lot of clients that say, oh, I'm not gonna pay my last month, they're just gonna keep my security deposit. Do not assume that unless it's been explicitly agreed upon, especially in writing from your landlord. Do not assume they're willing to accept the security deposit as your last month's rent. Because think about it from their perspective. They're holding on to that security deposit to make sure you haven't done any major damage to the property. And if you have, 
they have the funds they need to repair the property and get it back to rentable condition. If they agree to take that security deposit as your last month rent, and then you go and you move out and you leave crazy damage, well, now they're gonna have to take you to court to get those costs covered. And most landlords are not gonna want to do that. So do not assume that your security deposit can just be used for your last month's rent, unless that has been agreed upon and is in writing with your landlord prior to your last paying your last month's rent and prior to you moving out. I just wanna make sure all sides are protected. As you're getting packed up and you're getting ready to move out, one of the things you can also do is make some small repairs around um, you know, the space. Now, you don't have to be the handiest person in the world, and I'm not saying do any major renovations, but look around. You know, Do you have any small holes in the wall, maybe from pictures, you wanna patch those up. It's really, really easy to do that. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube, um, really the, the least DIY person in the world can patch you know, a quick little nail hole. Um, you also wanna make sure the appliances are all cleaned. I can't tell you how many rentals I go into where you know, the stove and the refrigerator are just, they look like they haven't cleaned in a year and they're just disgusting. Um, and the bathroom, right? The kitchen and the bathroom get the dirtiest. So you really wanna make sure you do your very, very best to clean and get all of those spaces and those appliances back to what they looked like when you moved in. Hopefully they look shiny and fresh and clean when you moved in. Um, and even if they didn't, do your very, very best. You wanna be able to put your best foot forward. Now, if you did any painting in the space and the agreement with the landlord is that you would paint it back to the original color, you also wanna make sure you do that. Um, and be really careful and mindful when you're painting. Um, you know, tape things off, put down drop cloths, I know this may seem like you know common sense, but you know I had a, a tenant move into a rental a couple years ago, and they had painted orange on the walls, and there was orange paint all over the trim and all over the carpet and the ceiling, and it just looked horrible. So number one, if you're going to paint while you're living there, make sure you do it as close to professional as possible, um, and certainly when you're moving out, you want to do the same thing. If if you've painted it back to the original but you've left paint all over the carpet where well, you could be charged for that in your security deposit. So be very, very mindful of that. Now I'm gonna go back to something I had said earlier. You know, I had mentioned about cleaning the appliances and the bathrooms and making sure you can get them as clean as possible. Now technically, according to most leases, you are supposed to leave the property in broom swept condition. However, broom swept can be left up to a little bit of interpretation. So what I'm gonna tell you is just to err on this, the side of caution and clean, clean, clean. That's going to include cleaning the dust off any ceiling fans, um, vacuuming out cabinets, your kitchen drawers and your cabinets especially. They get a lot of stuff in them. Vacuum that out. Clean out those closets. Vacuum that all up. Clean the windows. I mean, really, you're, you're doing basically a deep clean in the space. The cleaner you can present the space to the landlord, the better off you're gonna be. Pretend like you're moving into it and clean it that way. If you don't have time to do that, maybe you're moving out moving in and it's all happening very, very quickly, you can also arrange for a really inexpensive cleaning company to come in and do a once over on um, the rental or the space as well. Sometimes that can really save you time um, and stress in the process. If you know, I know moving is sometimes is a lot, so don't worry about if you can get an inexpensive crew in, but clean, clean, clean. Now, let's assume you've made your repairs, you've repainted, you've cleaned it all up, and you've moved out. This is another very obvious thing, but take all your stuff with you. Do not leave anything behind. That is the quickest way to get on the landlord's bad side, is if you leave stuff behind. You know, go through the closet, go through the drawers, go through the cabinets. If you're doing the deep clean, like I recommend, you're already naturally gonna be going through everything, but really make sure, uh, gosh, I've seen some crazy things. I've seen full sets of ceramic uh, bowls in the kitchen. I've seen for coats left behind, entire bed sets, bed frames, posters, clothes, shoes, food. Oh my gosh, the food left behind and the booze. Um, just, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. Look, the landlord doesn't want to clean out your stuff. If you don't want it when you move, throw it away. Do not leave 
anything behind because guess what they can charge you for a disposal fee to get rid of those items don't do it just take everything with you and here's a pro tip if you're moving or while you're moving that day keep a couple of extra boxes and garbage bags empty and ready to go because I promise you as you're moving stuff out you're gonna find random things here and there that you forgot about and having that empty box that you can just throw it in and pack away or the garbage garbage bag where you can just throw the garbage in and move it away. It will make your life so much easier. Now that you've moved out, you want to arrange a move out inspection. Now again, if your landlord's not going to do this with you directly, you want to do this yourself. Um, this is going to be exactly the same thing you did upon move in, but it's going to be moving out. So what you're going to do is you're going to walk through the whole space and you're going to make any notes about any new damage. You don't have to make notes of anything that was existing. You already have that in a report and you already have the photos. You just want to take notes on anything new and photos of everything. You want to photograph everything again with that time and date stamped. For example, you wanna make sure that if there was absolutely no damage in the bedroom when you moved in, and there's absolutely no damage when you moved out, you have a photo to prove that. Um, this is what's gonna protect you and make sure you have proof that you left the space in the proper condition and that there's no other damages or anything that the landlord might be trying to collect from you that you didn't cause. So this is to protect you. Again, if your landlord's not gonna do it with you, make sure you do this. This is very, very important. And you're gonna put this in that file box or the folder or anything that I had mentioned earlier. We're gonna keep everything together. You're gonna have your move in report and your move out report together so that it's a very clear comparison of what the condition of the property was both times. Now, if you're doing the inspection with the landlord, a lot of times this is a great time to return the keys. You also don't want to forget anything else they may have loaned you, like um, garage door openers or basement door keys or anything like that. Anything that um, has to do with the property that they lent to you in the beginning, you want to make sure that you're returning it to them then. If they're not doing it or meeting you for the inspection, you want to make sure that you know exactly how and the right way these keys need to be returned back to the landlord. Now, if you're mailing anything, make sure that you send everything certified and that you keep tracking numbers. And if you can have them be something they have to sign for when it gets delivered. Cause again, you don't want to have keys or grudge door openers or any of that kind of stuff get lost in the mail or the landlord claim they never received them and they're trying to charge you for it. So anything you can do to protect you and make sure that it gets to them the right way is what you want to do. Now, congratulations, you've gotten through all part of the process and you moved on. You might be saying, okay, well, when do I get my money? <laughs> now here in New Jersey, the landlords have 30 days to return your security deposit back to you legally, but don't be afraid to follow up with your landlord. If you're meeting them at that final inspection and everything goes well, ask them, when can I expect my security deposit back? You know, I even had a landlord in New York City that handed me the check right at the walkthrough, um, but that's not necessarily typical, especially if there is damage. Sometimes they have to figure out how much the damage is gonna cost before they can return it to you. Um, so follow up with them. Make sure they have your new address. Again, even though you sent it to them in the letter, make sure they have it and find out when they're gonna follow up. Now, if you haven't received it within uh, a couple of weeks, follow up again. When can I expect my security deposit? Certainly about two weeks after you move out, if they had to get any estimates on um, repairs or damage, then they should have that information by then and they should know how much they're gonna be able to return back to you. Certainly if you haven't heard back from the landlord after 30 days, you might wanna consider filing a civil suit to get your security deposit back. In this case, the judge is gonna decide whether or not you're um, granted your full security or if it has to be adjusted and calculated for damages. This is where having that file of the move-in condition and move-out condition is gonna be really, really, really important and helpful to you if you end up having to go there. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully all of these tips and advice I've given you in this video um, helps you avoid all of that and you're gonna get your money back, but just in case you need to go that route, it's really good idea to have all of that prepared and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this information helpful and thank you so much for your continued support. I really enjoy making these videos for you every week. If you have a topic or a suggestion for a video, leave it in the comments section below. My goal is to make the videos you want and need. I'll see you next week. I gotta pick that up. Uh, I just realized how dirty this money probably is. <laughs>